The Prophet Joseph deepened our understanding of the power of speech when he taught, It is by words that every being works when he works by faith. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Joshua spake, and the great lights which God had created stood still. Elijah commanded, and the heavens were stayed for the space of three years and six months, so that it did not rain. All this was done by faith, said the prophet Joseph Smith. Faith, then, works by words, and with words its mightiest works have been and will be performed. Like all gifts which cometh from above, words are sacred and must be spoken with care and by constraint of the Spirit. It is with this realization of the power and sanctity of words that I wish to caution us, if caution is needed, regarding how we speak to each other and how we speak of ourselves. There is a line from the Apocrypha which puts the seriousness of this issue better than I can. It reads, The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh bones. With that stinging image in mind, I was particularly impressed to read in the book of James that there was a way I could be a perfect man. Said James, For in many things we offend all, but if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle the whole body. Continuing the image, imagery of the Bible, uh, I'm sorry, of the bridle, he writes, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also ships, which, though they be great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. Then James makes his point. The tongue is also a little member. But behold, how great a forest a little fire can burn. So is the tongue a fire among our members. It defileth the whole body. It is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, he says, these things ought not so to be. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Obviously, James doesn't mean our tongues are always iniquitous, nor that everything we say is full of deadly poison. But he clearly means that at least some things we say can be destructive, even venomous. And that is a chilling indictment for a Latter-day Saint. The voice that bears profound testimony, utters fervent prayer, and sings the hymns of Zion can be the same voice that berates and criticizes, embarrasses and demeans, inflicts pain, and destroys the spirit of oneself and of others in the process. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. James grieves, my brethren and sisters, these things ought not so to be. Is this something we could all work on just a little? Is this an area which we could each try to be a little more like a perfect man or woman? 